The main aim of our research is to look at plant-based foods, how they are digested and how, how we can optimise the release of nutrients. So we're looking at how foods are digested, uh, how they break down as they travel through the gastrointestinal tract and um, how that affects the way in which nutrients are released and the metabolic response to food. We're especially interested in pulses. And pulses are really important uh, across the world because of uh, food security. So they're really good for the soil quality. Uh, they, they improve the soil and there's also many different varieties that are grown in different regions. So they're adapted to many different climates across the world. And nutritionally, pulses are really important because they have a good balance between protein, carbohydrate and dietary fibre. So, uh, so there's a lot of potential with pulses in terms of their nutrition, um, but it's about optimising how you process them to make the most of that. Dietary fibre is really important. It's the, uh, the plant cell wall is basically what dietary fibre is. And one of the things we've found by uh, looking at how foods are digested in the lab is that the structure of that dietary fibre affects how nutrients are released from the plant tissue we're looking at. And if the dietary fibre is uh, encapsulating the nutrients, so if it's surrounding the starch and the protein that are naturally present inside the cell, then those nutrients aren't going to be released in the gut and they're not going to be absorbed. That can be a good thing if you are looking to um, perhaps not gain weight because it means you're getting less energy from food. But if we want to use pulses as a way of tackling undernutrition, then we want to make sure that people are getting the maximum amount of protein, carbohydrate and fat out of those, um, those pulses. So by looking at the dietary fibre and how that changes as it travels through the gut and how it changes while pulses are being uh, cooked or processed, we can understand uh, how dietary fibre can be preserved in different foods to optimise nutrient release. So we use a range of different methods to look at uh, digestion. So accessing what happens in the human body is very challenging. So what we do is that we simulate digestion in the laboratory. So we, we have a range of different models that we use and they allow us to uh, look at different aspects of digestion. For example, how enzymes interact with pulses in different parts of the gut or how pulses uh, change in the mouth, in the stomach, the small intestine and, and large intestine. And then we can take some biochemical measurements and relate that to nutrition. We can also look at the microstructure of material, which we know is very important uh, in terms of controlling nutrient release. And we have many different uh, techniques that we use to do that. Some aspects of digestion are very complicated and we work very closely with collaborators from other leading institutes across the UK. For example, we have engineers who are helping us understand how food changes as a result of being pushed through the gut. Uh, and we also uh, work with uh, experts in gut physiology and dietetics who have a better understanding of the gut and how uh, nutrients are absorbed across, that, uh, across the gut wall. We're working closely with the food industry to make sure that uh, the products that we're working on can actually taste nice, uh, be convenient for the consumer and affordable. And that's quite challenging while still delivering those nutritional benefits. But we've made some progress and we've now uh, got some bread products made up. These are showing uh, a greatly reduced starch digestibility, which we're hoping will translate to a low glycemic response in vivo. And if these breads uh, can be made to taste just as nice as normal bread, then um, we'll be able to, to offer people who are perhaps following a low glycemic diet more option than is currently available. Well, ultimately, I think it's really important that the, uh, the findings that we develop in the lab can actually come back to the consumer and benefit the general public. Uh, at the minute, there is such a big problem in the UK with type 2 diabetes, overweight and obesity and diet should be a really important part of preventing and managing those diseases. But one of the barriers at the minute is that there just aren't enough 
food products out there that meet consumer requirements. So this is an area where I think our research can really deliver impact.